As a teacher within the foundation stage, I realise that a lot of children now at the moment are learning from home. I know this can be a very stressful time for parents because they're not un they're quite unsure of what to do. They mightn't have access to a range of resources that they feel they might need to teach their child. So therefore, to keep my own mind busy and to help the children that I teach in primary two and to reach out to anyone else really who needs some support, I've decided to create some videos of simple activities that you can do in your own home with your child or your children uh, through the resources that you have available to you. So today I've decided to complete a short video on a numeracy educational activity. Now this activity will be probably aimed more towards the foundation stage, but it's very easy for you to adapt it to suit the level and age and stage that your child would be at. So this numeracy activity is focused on money and I'm going to take you into my kitchen now in a moment and we're going to visit the fruit shop. Uh, the resources that I've used today uh, are everything that I have here within my own home. I didn't go out to buy anything. Uh, I just used really what I've had and it can be done so easily. So hopefully you will enjoy. So I'm going to take you into my kitchen now. And as I said before, everything that I'm using today for this little lesson is things that I've had here in my own house. So I have the kitchen table all set up already for this lesson on money and visiting the fruit shop. And I will take you through it now. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my kitchen table all set up. I have my fruit bowl, all fruit that I have here within my own house. I have um, just coloured pieces of card that I cut up to make into little price labels. Now, I already prepared these price labels. So as you can see, I have written down the prices on them, like 8p, £1, 25p. Again, this would be probably more suitable to children within the foundation stage, but you can adapt your own price labels to suit the age and stage of your child. I have my purse out on the table because children need to know that when handling money, it's real life experiences. They need real money. They need a real a visual item of a purse because these are items that they will be using as they grow up. I also have a money spider page, which I prepared within a minute. And I'll explain to you what this page is at the very end. So once you have your table all set up, like I've explained to you already, then if you're working with your child, so it's just you and your child, or perhaps maybe you have a couple of children, then you, the first thing you must do is assume your roles. So there should be a shopkeeper and there should be a customer or a couple of customers. So the very first thing that the shopkeeper must do is they must take out the pieces of fruit and match them up to a little price label. Okay, so here we have an apple and it costs 3p. We have an orange and it costs 70p. We have a pear and it costs 25p. We have some strawberries and they cost 10p. And we have our bunch of bananas and they cost one pound. So once the shopkeeper has completed their job and matched up the pieces of fruit to each label, then it is over to the customer, over to your children. So, your child then must select a piece of fruit that they want to buy in the fruit shop. So they might want to buy some strawberries to begin with. So you would say, okay, that's fine. You can buy the strawberries, but they cost 10p. Can you use the coins in front of you and give me 10p? So, there actually isn't a 10p coin sitting out in front of me here. So this again is a time for your child to problem solve. What ways can they make 10p using what they have in front of them? They might decide to use two 5p's. They might decide to use perhaps some 2p coins or some 1p coins. But whatever your child chooses, it's so important that you discuss the option with your child. So why did you choose two 5p coins? Are there any other coins that you could have used there to make 10p? And things like that. Just simple questioning. Okay, 
Then put them on your back again and encourage your child to select another piece of fruit. So they might decide to select, let me see, the bunch of bananas. And the bunch of bananas cost one pound. So again, encourage your child to select an appropriate coin or a few coins that they would use to pay for these bananas. So again, your child might choose a one pound coin. If they do choose a one pound coin, I think it's very important to explain to your child at this stage that yes, that's the quickest way we could pay for the bunch of bananas. And it's all about efficiency whenever we're talking about money. So what are the quickest ways that we can pay for things? And that's a key life skill that your child will need whenever they are going into the shop and buying their own items. And whenever they grow up and they're out doing the groceries for themselves. Your child might also select 250p coins because 250p coins make one pound. Again, depending on the age and stage of your child, you could talk about the fact that within one pound, one pound is made up of 100 pence. So the half of 100 is equal to 50. Okay, so again, just continuous numeracy skills being developed all the time. Now, as the game continues, I think it's very important that you give your child a little challenge so that they don't get bored and they'll want to play this game again. So again, encourage them to buy another item in the shop. So we'll start, let's see, with our apple. Now this will be very easy, probably suited to um, children within the foundation stage, but I'll show you how we adapt it now in a little minute. So the apple costs 3p, okay? Now, you then, as a shopkeeper, you're going to actually give your child a 5p coin, okay? And you're going to say to your child, oh, unfortunately, you've only got a 5p coin in your purse today. The apple costs 3p. So, you're going to ask your child, is 5p more or less than 3p? And your child should be able to say, well, 5p is more than 3p. So, encourage your child to give you the 5p. Now, when you go into a shop and you give the shopkeeper more money than the amount, it's very important that the children learn that they will get back change, okay? When we're calculating change, we use our subtraction skills. So you would be encouraging your child to think about, okay, if I have the number five, and I'm going to subtract three, so I'm going to jump back three in my number line. What number do I land on? I land on the number two. So if I'm giving you back some change, I'm going to give you back 2p change. As a shopkeeper, you get the 2p with a 2p coin or two 1p coins, and you actually give the change back to your child. Okay, so discussing change is very important. Now that was an easier example. You can make it harder. So you could perhaps uh, encourage your child to select the pair and the pair cost 25p, but in their purse, they might only have a 50p coin or they might only have a one pound coin. So again, letting them know that when we give too much money, we need some money back. We need to get our change back and help your child work out what change that they should get back. Again, all of these life skills that they will need when they're going out to do their own groceries for themselves. Okay, so once you spend time doing a little activity like that, uh, I, within about one minute, drew up this little spider and I call it my money spider. And you can get your own child to sit down and draw their own spider with its eight legs. And just as a little plenary to this activity, get your child to think about everything they know about money. So perhaps maybe they could draw some of the coins that they know. They could draw some of the notes that they know. They could think about other ways you can pay for items in the shop. Maybe they might know about a Visa card or a debit card. You can talk about that, you can talk about uh, banks, 
what are the use of banks, cash machines, and you can also talk about, and I think it's very important that children know that when we visit other countries, we don't use the money that we use here because we use a different currency. And using all of that different language is key for children when talking about money. So hopefully that was of some use. Very, very simple. I set this up very quick today and you know, you could spend half an hour on this with your child at home and that would be their numeracy covered for the day.